This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. Robin Drake, retired FBI special agent, chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program and Hidden Killers contributor. With us as we discuss Brian Koberger in this statement, it seems like the strategy of his defense lately has been make things up, stall, Make up things, install, and make up some more things. I mean, it really I'm is. Sad it's, I'm laughing. I'm so sorry. It's not it, funny at all. It's not a funny case, but I mean, it just seems to be true as to where things have been going. I mean, we've heard terms now, phantom matches being yeah. brought up. I even did a little looking on that to like, how often is that term used outside of this? And I haven't found a whole lot. Like, it's out there here and there, but it's kudos to Ann Taylor and their team for coming up with a catchy term that may make people think maybe there is phantom matches. The one in 5.37 octillion chance that it's a phantom match. Where do you see this going from here with all of the accusations that have come out and all of the excuses that we've seen from the Koberger side being rather weak? Same as we've been talking, you know, she is earning her money. I mean, what a great job. I was watching again something the other day with a bunch of defense attorneys talking about this case and her and saying she's doing her job. This is what you're supposed to be doing. This is, you know, if you have nothing, you sowed seeds of doubt. And it sounds like she's collecting. She wants these massive disclosure lists of all these people, of all the tests, of all these. Mm -hmm. It looks like, you know, she's going to probably feed it to her own expert to sow seeds of doubt that, hey, there are these phantom matches out there. You know, these tests aren't 100 percent. And if she can flip one person on a jury to keep him from being executed, she wins the day. So I think her strategy remains the same. It, It doesn't seem to deviate. Is there concern at all, though, when you have various expert witnesses and, you know, a majority of them are going to come out and say, look, this is not looking good. The odds of this being an abnormality is it's not there. It doesn't exist. But then you can pay someone that is also an expert, quote unquote, even if your main degree is in botany to come out and yeah. and say, no, I think there are phantom matches out there without... I mean, there's not a lot of legitimacy to her argument. I'm with you. You know, it's like everything we've been talking about. I think she's strategizing the jury about how to pick the right people, experts that, you know, have a credibility because they have an expertise in an area. But what's an expertise? They have training, they have experience, they have reps. But they're really going to come down to how do they present in a courtroom? Do they have Mm -hmm. experience doing that? And does then the cross-examination have the ability to refute it, to refute their behaviors? So, it, boy, the courtroom drama, that's the reason why they call it courtroom drama. Mm-hmm. That's because it comes down to it's a show. Yeah. It's a show for a jury. And it's always interesting, too, because we, you and I and others sit back in our armchairs, not in the jury box, and our impressions usually aren't exactly the same as a jury that's sitting in the box. Because remember... The play is not being performed for us. It's being performed for the people who are actually making the decision. So I think that's where she's really lining this up for. And people who are going to be qualified to be jurors in this, it's going to be tough. This going to be tough to mm-hmm. find jurors who are not extremely informed about this case, especially in Moscow, Idaho. Does that make for a good juror, though? I mean, quite honestly, if this is going on in your town and you are oblivious enough to it to not know enough to be on the jury, is that a good thing? That that one had been removed so far from one of the biggest murder cases in that state's history in a small town to to be a juror does that not almost show you know almost a lack of something? It's I think they're going to have a hard time not finding people you know finding someone that doesn't know anything about this. Yeah, I think the main questions are going to be how dispassionate can they be when listening to jury instructions, when listening to the judge's instructions, you know, when listening to instructions, I mean, I've sat on juries too. And I've actually sat on juries where I thought, you know, I think we've said this before, just because someone is found not guilty doesn't mean they're innocent. And I think that comes down to what she's attempting to do here. And so if you can find a jurist that can understand that, then that's who you want on the jury. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi.